My name is James Simmons. I'm one of the Daintree Field Service Engineers. Today we are here at uh, Hendersonville, North Carolina at our new Lighting Institute. Thank you so much for joining us. Today we're going to be talking about the Daintree Network System. So come on in and we'll show you how it works. So I'm going to be going through all the different uh, devices. And so first device I want to go over with you is our backbone of the system, which is the WAC-60. The WAC-60 is, is, WAC is short for Wireless Area Controller. Uh, as you can see, you take off this cover and you will have uh, different configuration buttons here. Also, you have Ethernet ports and different ports to utilize, uh, whether it be uh, PoE power or regular power. If you have to use PoE power, then you have to use a, a PoE splitter at this point in time. The WAC-60 uh, is not a native PoE device. Uh, also, it comes with a Ethernet cable to connect to your either your cell modem, which is one way that we deploy our system, or also to your internal company network. Okay, so this is the WAC-60. It has to be configured uh, with a, either unique IP address or it can, be, it can be connected with your cell modem. But my job as a field service engineer is to help you with configuring your system to make sure that these uh, come online. The other devices I'm going to go through with you are wired and wireless devices. All these devices have radios inside of them that communicate with our WAC-60 to create a Zigbee Nest Mesh Network. To understand what a Zigbee Nest Mesh Network, I would have you go to the Zigbee um, Alliance to understand more about how Zigbee Network works. But in a sense, what, it, what happens is the WAC-60 will receive in devices and all of these devices will create a mesh. They will talk, in, uh, they will communicate with each other and they'll receive a signal back into the WAC. What the WAC will do is it, it will utilize different schedules so you can control and also see di different occupancy, photo cells, on off light, uh, so on and so forth throughout the system, okay? So now I'm gonna go through some of the wired devices that we have within the system, all right? So this is where it really gets fun, okay, for a lot of the installers um, because there's a lot of different dip switches and different things that may need to be set. This is our WA100 device. This is uh, a lighting relay that turns lights on and off. You have to power up the device, but then there's a switch leg that goes out to different uh, lights that are in sequence with the system to turn them on and off. This device does have a radio inside of it that, again, talks back to the WAC so we can control it. All these different wires uh, do something different. I will refer you to the current uh, website um, to understand what each one of these configurations would do. But in a sense, what they will allow the system to do is to um, dim the lights up and down. You can control occupancy sensing. You can also use them for cutting on uh, different uh, loads. Could turn them on and off, things of that nature to be able to control uh, different devices. So this not only does lighting, but it also does some other controls as well, okay? For our high bays and some of our uh, warehouse utilization uh, lighting systems, this is a WHS-100. WHS-100 uh, can control, similar to a WA-100, it can control devices as far as cutting them on and off and also dimming. So what you would do is you would power up the device, connect your purple and gray wires, and that's your dimming loop, to either dim the device. And this one good thing about this device, it, it can sense whether or not it's an on-off light or whether it just dims the lights. It has a zero to 10 volt dimming uh, sink in it, so that's how we control our dimming, from zero to 10 volts, okay? Another wired device for uh, your emergency loads, if um, there, so these two devices can control normal power. If you have uh, emergency fixtures that you need to put in place, this device can control um, the emergency fixtures to where it provides a shunt relay for your uh, emergency systems. Okay. Now I'm going to go over the battery powered devices. Now this is kind of where it even gets more fun because this is where uh, you don't have to do any, do any wiring. All you have to do is take a device, open it up, and then you'll have, um, your screws will be provided. You can drill it into like a, a, a drop ceiling, a drywall, things of that nature. The device that I have in my hand currently is a, a WOS2 ox sensor. This ox sensor is powered not with just regular WAs, it has batteries that comes with it. It's actually powered with a 3.6 volt uh, AA type battery. It has two of them that comes, comes with it. You can adjust the sensitivity 
of this device to where you can calibrate it for uh, people coming in and out of the out of the space. Okay. To replace the WS2, this is a legacy device. We still have a lot of these that we still use uh, use out in the, in the field, but. Uh, we've got new devices that, that are coming on the scene. This is a WOS 3 uh, that has ox sensing as well as an integrated photo cell. So not only can I see when a person comes in, in and out of the space, I can also control the light level or have the system look at the light level and control uh, how I want to dim up and dim down the lights based upon the light level that comes in. The part that fell off was the uh, masking. We can also mask um, to where so this, this sensor has like a 360 degree ray, if you will. We can mask that and put that on top of there to where it only sees a certain portion. So we can do it that way, or as you see with this particular one, we can mask it uh, to where it's only seeing half, half the sensor, okay? So these are our, our newer ones. This one is integrated with the photo cell. This one is just the aux sensor, WOS3. This is another one of our legacy de devices, WPS1. Uh, which is a wireless uh, photo uh, sensor. And it will receive in the different light levels from a window sill or within your interior space. And you can adjust your lights up and down based upon your interior or exterior lighting that you receive into the system. So what I've went over so far was your wired devices and then your, some of your wireless devices. And these are aux sensors and photo cells. Now I'm gonna get into uh, your different switches that we have. We have both scene switches and on-off switches uh, that are available. Some other switches that we have are WWD2s-2 or 4. The difference between the 2s and the 4s is that the 2s would have a 2 button, the 4s has a 4 button. And then also uh, they can either be uh, gained, uh, recessed within the wall, or they can be surface mount. And then the suffix for that would be, uh, I would be IW or SM for your surface mount or your in-wall type of devices. So as you can see here, you've got four buttons here for your up and down and also your dimming, and then same here for your, for your two button switch, up and down and your dimming, okay? You can also uh, purchase a scene switch. This has four different scenes, and then within the control software that we'll be going through later, uh, you can set up your different scenes based upon the different buttons that you have. So one, two, three, four scenes. I can have one scene to do 20%, another scene to do um, uh, 40%, what have you, and then they control different lights within the zone. And, and that's a part of what we'll set up in the system. And lastly, one of the devices, and this is a device that's within the fixture itself. We do have devices that, that are plugged directly into the fixtures. Uh, this is a WIS-20. You also see um, some legacy devices called WIS-100s. Um, these devices plug directly within uh, the fixtures themselves and they integrate uh, aux sensing, photo cell, and some of them even have, like the WMZ-10s, they also have people counting. And so that's an increased or an enhanced uh, feature that you will have within a device that looks similar to this. What is unique about all these different devices is that they have what's called an IEEE address. Um, we utilize this information uh, to commission our system. So there'll be, on each one of these devices, you'll see uh, a sticker. Uh, and I'll have, a, have the last four or five digits will be in bold. So let's just say it's one, two, three, four, five. We take that information and we'll put it into our workbook. And this is how we commission our system. All those devices come in through our WAC and we're able to commission the system. Thank you. And we'll see you in the next video.